90.5 You find mine your choice Right, it's 5.32 and I'm with the three of choice. It's the back of time. I'm going to invite on to Power Vision. I'm with the station of choice. And on the line with me, can I leave Mpuliki Mpuliki? Mpuliki, good morning. Hi, Zandile. A very good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I hope you're well too. I am blessed. I cannot complain. Let me start with the word of prayer so we get on the business of the day. Father, we thank you for this morning. You continue to look out for us, mighty God. You continue to bless us, mighty God. Your word says your message renews every morning. Today, we are renewed in our mind, in our thinking, and every aspect of our life is renewed. We are blessed because we know your faithful, your faithfulness you know, endures forever. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Continue to lead us as we continue to create impact. Whoever is tuning in today for our segment is going to be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Maguana, talking about that, uh, what, are we, uh, what are we talking about uh, today? All right. Today we are talking about how to rise above self-imposed limitations. How do we rise above self-imposed limitations? Many a times when we look at our lives, we think that the, the stagnation comes from those around us. Sometimes we get caught in the red race of thinking that things are not going our way because there are certain people, certain things outside of ourselves that are causing that kind of stagnation. So today, I'm just going to remind our listeners that sometimes we become our stumbling block. Sometimes we become our own haters. Sometimes we become our own self-sabotaging creatures that we are not willing to let go of certain things that keep us stuck where we are. So today I am going to be talking to you about how then do, you know, do, we, do we deal with the issue of self-imposed limitations. So we are talking about how do we rise beyond the self-imposed you know, limitations today. So you can read for us our thought of the day so that we, we, we get to understand exactly what are those key elements that we can use today, you know, to let go from holding yourself back from being the people that we really want to become. Okay, um, let me just read. It says, you are where you are because of who you are. You can change where you are by changing who you are. Yeah, those are the words of Jim Rohn, one of the leading four founders of the field personal development. He's saying you are where you are because of who you are, because of your identity. And he said you can change where you are by changing who you are. You know, many a times, Zandile, we limit ourselves by the titles we attach to ourselves. If you see yourself only as a radio presenter, People may come from all walks of life saying, you, 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 you can do this, Zandile, you can add this. But when you look at yourself only as a, only one specific thing, you automatically eliminate all other options of growth. One of the things that I do when I teach individuals uh, on, 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 say, this excellence and being productive and something that I've written in my book, What Amazing Employees Do, I say never, ever limit yourself to to a specific title you are a, a you know a, a being you are a creative being multifaceted being beyond just the title you put to your name how many people today we know they can do much more better than they can do but because they have told themselves because they were told ah when well, you are only this now they are not even able to go beyond the circumference of their own community they are not able to go beyond the boundaries of their own countries. So your identity is the, the standpoint or maybe the foundation to building anything beyond what people may limit you to. So self-imposed limitation sometimes comes from the identity of what we have identified ourselves as. Now we can go to our first point so that I can talk much more about how normally people we limit ourselves based on the identity we place on ourselves. Now that identity becomes the case to our own growth. Now that 
identity becomes the hindrance and the limitation from expressing life and to live in life fulfilled. So that is what I want us now to look at, these four key elements that how do we rise above these self-imposed limitations that we have on our day-to-day -day life. You can read for us our first point there, Zandile, then I can explain it much further. First point, change the story of your life that you keep telling yourself and replaying to others. Yeah. We all have personal stories that we keep sharing. I am this because of that. You know, I cannot change because of this. You know, they hurt me. That's why I can't do this. You know, I, I've been hurt before and I know things like this. I cannot do one, two, three. These are the stories we all have. But some stories keep us where we are, while some help us to evolve and go beyond what we have been doing before, right? So if we keep telling ourselves the stories of defeat, the stories of self-pity, the stories of not being able to do certain things because of certain people, the stories that we cannot go beyond our current job positions, that story becomes a reality. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Many of us are not aware how powerful the ways we use on ourselves has an impact today and even forever. Whatever we proclaim, whatever we command with our tongue, it ends up becoming the major manifestation in our lives. So every single day when you tell yourself a certain specific thing, when you keep telling and playing a certain story in your life, that what end up manifesting in your life. Many people today, they have limitations in their relationships. They have limitations in their finances. They have limitations in their career because of the story they keep telling themselves, believing that they are not capable enough, believing that they are not qualified enough, believing that they are not deserving of the love that people can give them, believing that they are not deserving of being respected and honored, believing that they are not deserving of being celebrated. Many people today, they are still holding back to the chains of the past pain. Now it has programmed them to think that that's their identity. Because of someone not having trusted them, they feel that they are not worthy of trust. Because someone before never celebrated them, they feel that today they are not worthy to be celebrated. That is why now they start thinking that they are being fake when things start happening to them. They start thinking that life is about to get them on the wrong side when good things start happening to them. Why? Because in the past, there has been a thread, needle after needle, that they have been suing of saying, I am not deserving. I am not good enough. I am not confident enough. I don't come from a good background. And that is the story that is holding many people back today. Even when they are called in the boardroom, you know, I, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, Zandile. You know, there's a lady, I will not mention names, who said, you know, one day I was called in the room, you know, to be given promotion and I end up recommending someone else. I don't know why I did that. But today, I still ask myself, am I having that inferiority complex in me that even when I know I am deserving of this, I've put in the work, I showed up, I still can't believe that I, 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 I'm, I, I'm deserving of a promotion. Many people play these tapes of self-pity and self-sabotage, and they cannot break the roof ceiling of their lives because these stories keep holding them back. It's like you have been thrown in an ocean with a brick, you know, tied to your feet. Stories tie us to certain destination. Is it the destination you love or is it the destination you don't even like? But we can change that. By changing the story, we keep telling ourselves, yes, my previous relationship, I was not respected, I was not honored, but I believe that there's someone who can honor me. Yes, in my previous job, people didn't respect me, people didn't celebrate me, people didn't even promote me. No matter what I did, they didn't do this, but in this new job, I am believing God that things will start to open for me. And now you change the story of your life. Yes, you have been here. Yes, things didn't work out, but you can't carry the same image into your future because that will always be the story of your life. So by changing the story of your life, that things can change, things can improve, people can honor me, people can celebrate me, people can come and help me. As we change the, our confessions, 
we change our direction and our future. And our future is only some ways away from our manifestation. If we change what we proclaim and say about our lives, the things we say end up changing the manifestation that people see in our lives. Many people today, we are stuck where we are because of the story we keep telling ourselves. My question to you, our dear listeners, this morning is, what story do you keep telling yourself? What story do you keep telling yourself every single day that is bringing the manifestation of the life you have today? Our life changes when we change the commands and the confessions we say every single morning. You can start today by listing the few things that you have seen that are going well in your life and start building the confidence or start proclaiming the things, the good things about your life. That even though I am not where I am supposed to be, every day I am making small changes and my life is changing. I might not have everything figured out, but my joy cannot be moved because it's not based on the things being figured out. And we start changing small things every day, small steps, but great distances, right? So we must decide as we wake up every morning, that of course, things have not been going our way, but that's not our reality. That's not my identity. That's not my destination. My destination is unfolding every single day. And by changing the confession that I have, I know I can put it in the direction in which I want. So that is what we need to understand about how do we rise above self-imposed limitation. We change the story of our lives. We change the story we keep replaying for others. And now they, they, there's a certain story, Zandini, that your friends, your close people know you about. Is it a story that empowers you or is it a story that disempowers you? It's very important to know what kind of story you are playing in people's heads. That when they see you, they already say, complain. story. There's a certain story that is playing in people's minds which you have created. And you can recreate and reinvent the story that people start looking at you differently. Remember the words we shared some previous uh, segment before. We said when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at changes. We can change our story. We can change where we are by changing our confessions. Our confessions can change our story. We can go to our second point, Zandil. All right. The second point says, reframe your identity on a higher power you believe in. Yeah. Sometimes when you look around and you are trying to change your story, you even laugh on your own because things don't seem to add up. Things don't seem to go as you may wish. And now, the only thing that can make sense becomes the thing that you believe in. For me, it's God, right? So now, when I start looking around, or, when, or, or, or maybe just personalize it, when I start looking around growing up and wanting to go beyond our village, I remember there was a point when I was walking in my village and I said, I don't want to be raised here and die here. I want to travel the world. I want to see what people see. I want to be a force to reckon with. I, 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 when, when I was telling myself those things and I was looking around, I was not finding people who are doing what I say I want to become. But guess what? I believed in God. And I remember when I was going to, you know, um, our Assemblies of God, and when, when the preachers were just preaching and the Word of God revealing to me who we are in God, what we can do in God, what we can become in God. That has become my frame of reference. To say, although things don't seem to be, I am going to activate my faith to believe that all the things that I say I can become, all the things that I say I can acquire in life, all the things that I say I can change in my life, my faith is the one which is going to become a seed that brings all that manifestation in. So, yes, sometimes you look around, your friends don't look like the future you want to go. Yes, your salary don't look like you can become the person you say you want to become. Yes, your business does not look like you will even be have enough money to travel even to South Africa. Yes, your grade in your school does not seem like you may graduate. 
Yes, circumstances does not seem to be aligned for you. The stars are not aligned for you. But having a higher power, believing in your higher power, that things can change and realign, is the one that helps us to go beyond our self-imposed limitations. Because the prisons we created for ourselves and locked ourselves in cannot be opened by the same attitude that we created them with. But believing that there is higher power beyond us in action, that every single day as we walk in the spiritual realm, there are things that are changing and things that are evolving. When we start believing beyond that, when we start having faith, which simply means believing that the things that we see today were created out of the power we cannot see. It means what, Zandile? It means now we know that although things seem this way, they can be changed by the power that we cannot see. And now we start activating the, the faith. What happens? We start going to the interview, even though we know we may not be qualified. We start applying for the jobs, even though we know we, we are not qualified. We start showing up to places by faith and knowing that things can change for us. And many people will tell you things change for them not because they knew they were qualified, not because everyone was supporting them, not because every resource was available, not because the economy was right, not because the leadership was empowering, no, but because they had the faith, they believed in the higher power that although things may not seem to be in my way, I believe that as I do things, they will realign for my way. And things began to change. That is another point on how do we rise above our self-imposed limitations. Oh, the economy is not right. Ah, the environment is not conducive. Believing in the higher power eliminates all options of believing that things may not work. Believing in the higher power gives us the confidence to go beyond what we have always done. Believing in the higher power gives us the confidence that even strangers will embrace us and support us. But if we believe in nothing, we start relying on our own qualifications. We start relying on our own understanding. We miss out what we can become. We, we, we limit ourselves within the prisons of our own minds. So let's go to our third point. All right, a third point, stop tolerating the character, the character and the borrowed belief system from our circle of influence that has nothing to do with who you are. Yeah, stop tolerating the character and what? And the borrowed belief system, the, the belief system that you will borrow from people around you, that is your circle of influence, that has nothing to do with who you are. Randile, you know there are certain people when you are around, there are certain ways they say to you, even when they are joking, you are sitting down, you are having fun, they say something. But you know that thing, even when you get to your, your room, your house, you, are, you try to go to bed, it starts replaying in your mind. And you start asking yourself a question, am I an abusive person? Am I an intolerant person? Someone says, said it as a joke. But you know that this person always says this thing. It's not a joke. Even though they laugh about it, it's not. You know, sooner or later, your mind starts telling you that you are an intolerant person, a disrespectful person, depending on what they said about you in that particular moment. So what I'm saying this morning is to rise above these self-imposed limitations. Clear the air. You know, Stop tolerating what other people deem you to be, that you know you are not. There are certain people who, who are so negative that without even realizing, they start imposing their limited self-belief in you. They start extending what they cannot do to thinking that that is something you cannot do. They start, ex you know, expressing their fears. Sooner or later, if you are not careful, you start owning their fears as yours. So we must be mindful every day. What am I tolerating with this joke? With this, ah, I'm just kidding. What am I tolerating when people are saying things and they say, ah, I'm just kidding? Because sometimes we tolerate certain things that now become our prison. And now tomorrow you cannot even show up and share anything good because these people are saying, ah, nothing good comes from you, right? So we must be mindful because character is not a one-way thing. It's also dependent on around people around you. People create certain energies. 
And if you are not careful, you may swim in that energy. And now, the things you know you are capable of doing, tomorrow people are calling you forth to do, you are not able to do. Because you are surrounding yourself with the energy of people who are saying you are not good enough. And tomorrow you are trying to make a presentation, and, and you know you can master this presentation. You know you can execute this well. And this is your, 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 your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But because of the energy you have been surrounding yourself with, you are becoming fearful, dreadful, fatigued, stressed. Now you can't even make the presentation. Because if my friends don't believe in me, why would this stranger believe me to invest in my business? And now the energy wraps off at the wrong time. Now you are missing an opportunity, not because you're not capable, but because you have tolerated certain character and borrowed certain belief system from the people you have spent most of your time with. Without knowing it, now you have inherited their fears. Now you have inherited their, their, their self-sabotage nature. Now you have inherited the insult. Now you can easily insult people. Why? Because most of the time the energy is about Rohan. So we must be very mindful about this self-imposed limitation. They come outside, but guess what? The person who signs the memorandum of agreement is yourself in your mind, in your house, meditating on what people say. Now you are starting to behave in what you are meditating on. So we must be very careful not to tolerate and entertain any jokes, any borrowed belief system that has nothing to do with who you are. It's very crucial. Let's go to our last point, Zandine. Right. Last point says, fall in love with self-development. Expand your thinking by acquiring empowering knowledge. Expand your thinking by acquiring empowering knowledge. Fall in love with self-development. I can tell you, Mumpulik Makwana that manifests today who do what we do today started when I was in high school, when I decided that I want to learn and learn beyond my classroom set up. I remember I would go to the library and I'll spend most of my time there. When I closed my Form 5, I would stay with my grandmother at Pique, and I'll go to Silibe Pique Library just next to the bus rank. I will study and study and study. Some of the words I quote today, they come from the studies that I did in that year. And, and, and I worked on myself. I decided that I want to learn more. And this has nothing to do with my qualification. This has nothing to do sometimes with the people that I hang around, but all have to do with the information that I've worked on. Goats have a system called regurgitation, where they eat food, and then sooner or later when they go to the crawl in the, in the evening, they get back that food and start chewing it again. And the same thing with our mind. If you are not putting anything in your mind that is empowering, life-changing, inspiring, Sooner or later when you are alone, what kind of movies are you playing now in your head? What have you put in you that every day your system is reminding you of what you have put in? Many people don't put anything. That's why they are bitter, arrogant, and always blaming and complaining, right? Because they think that their lack of exercise or their lack of doing anything has to do with other people who are improving themselves. When you're not putting anything in your mind, you will blame everything for anything that happens in your life. So decide today that you are not going to impose any limitations on yourself by not studying. Just one book a month, one book two months is enough to expand your consciousness from your level of thinking and the way you look at things. So I'm just encouraging us every day, and this point I would like to emphasize it every single day. We cannot go far with the same information we have. We cannot go to the next level without the next level education. So let's challenge ourselves every single day to learn more, do more, expose ourselves more, and by doing that, our life will change. Remember, this is Empowering Your Vision. We come to you every Tuesdays at 05.30 on RB2 with myself and Zandile. My name is Mompuliki Makwana from Maladao. My number is 74776196. 74776196. Zandile, thank you so much for hosting me. Our dear listeners, remember, you can go to my YouTube channel and access all the episodes that we have done if you missed any on Empowering Your Vision. Thank you so much. Let's do this again next week, Tuesday. Thank you so much, Mr. McGuana. Till next time, good day. All right, cheers. Cheers.